Thank you for watching another St. Mary video. Today we're going to talk about the new Meditech discharge functionality that we've been waiting for for quite some time. It should be noted that this is just a review of the discharge process and is not a substitute for the comprehensive computer-based learning that is available for training purposes. One of the key features of this new discharge workflow is that you can actually start the discharge process on admission and continue it throughout the uh, whole stay. And that is possible because it's an interdisciplinary workflow that allows anybody taking care of the patient to contribute to the discharge. So that the specialist that wants to schedule a follow-up appointment can do that on the day they see the patient and, and have the follow-up appointment be in the system so that nobody has to actually do it uh, when the patient's actually walking out the door. Uh, and this allows for a much easier and much more streamlined discharge process on the day of discharge. You know, ideally, most of the quote-unquote work of discharge should already be done and in the system. And the person that's actually discharging the patient, you know, should really be someone that's coordinating and, and kind of bringing all of these uh, things together and making sure that the patient has it in their hand when they walk out. This will help our overall discharge process and maybe even make better use of the time of our physician extenders. There are quite a number of enhancements to this version of the discharge workflow. Uh, Meditech actually had a very good discharge process work group that I participated on and quite a number of others from around the nation participated on, all Meditech customers. And over, pro over one and a half years, you know, they, they took a lot of our feedback and developed you know, what you're about to see. We did go through this with our providers. We had a, a very well attended meeting with pretty much every stakeholder, you know, at our hospital. And we got very good feedback, you know, on this functionality. And I'm looking forward to hearing from you as well as to what you think. The discharge process has three components. Step one is to complete the actual instructions. Step two is to, dis step two is to enter a discharge order. And step three is to actually finalize the orders so that they can be printed. Let's get right to it. So starting with your regular home screen here, we're going to go into the discharge module. And you can see there's a number of sections here, starting with the patient problems. We'll click into that, and you can see all the problems should be listed, especially for those users that are using PDOC or other parts of the system. You can select problems from there or add problems at your leisure and then go on to the next step. If it's not the day of discharge, you can put in an anticipated day of discharge for the uh, team to... Uh, be able to follow. Next is a little notepad that allows you to put in a little free text note. So something like wife will pick up patient after a wheelchair is arranged can be entered. It's important to note that this uh, does not float anywhere. It just sits in the system and it allows the team to stay coordinated regarding the discharge plans. The next thing to do will be to select an anticipated place of discharge that's fairly self-explanatory and then move on to the most important part of the discharge instructions, which is the discharge medications. So you click on the edit button, go into the medication screen. This should be pretty familiar to everyone. Um, the only change here is that the home medications are now on top and you can do the medication reconciliation starting with the home medications and carefully paying attention to the inpatient medications. This is not optimal, uh, however, this is um, the way Meditech chose to implement this functionality. We have asked them to consider a side-by-side -side comparison and some other uh, strategies. So here I'm going to pick a number of medications. Uh, I'm going to stop the, uh, uh, the Pradaxa. I'm going to continue the vitamin D, the digoxin, and the cardizem. I uh, decided I'm going to change the uh, Nexium to continue to stop. And you can see you don't have to click and undo anymore. You can just change the radio button. Here I'm going into the iron and I'm renewing it. So I have to enter number of pills or number of days. Here I chose to do number of days. That, for me, that's usually easier. I'm going to change the Lasix, and you can see at the bottom, you know, the patient is on uh, IV Lasix. So every time I click a, a medication from the top, you can see it grays out at the bottom as well. And here I'm changing the uh, PO Lasix to uh, BID and putting in a number of days since it's a standing dose. 
if it was a PRN dose, I'd have to put in a number of pills. Continuing down the same path, uh, continuing the lisinopril, continuing the pravastatin, and continuing the uh, spiriva. Now I'd like to um, enter a new medication. I'm going to choose the medication button and order a little Percocet. So I can open up the menu there and pick the pill. And this is pretty much identical to our existing functionality. Again, since it's a PRN medication, I'm going to put in a number of pills rather than a uh, number of days. And save that. So now I have my list, I can review it and then pin it, and um, it's going to prompt me to print, uh, which I probably should do because I have a controlled substance which should be wet signed. Uh, if I wanted to not print, I could just easily select the uh, save option and not print. Now, looking at this list, you can see it's pretty different than what we're used to. It's got these four different sections, which shows a new, continued, changed, and stopped, which is a little bit clearer than uh, the previous functionality that we had. Here, I'm going to order some labs. Again, this is uh, pretty much identical to uh, existing functionality. Um, you, you do have to enter an indication. Again, you have to go into the problem list. If your problem is not listed, you would go to the problem list tab and add the problem. And now that it's added, I can add a dig level here as well. And it saved the uh, diagnosis from the previous medication, which is you know, handy, I guess. And when I'm done, I select OK. And move on to referrals. And again, this is pretty much identical to previous uh, implementation. Um, there is a little bug here that I think Metatech is working on where in the past it was sorted alphabetically and now it's kind of... Uh, not sorted alphabetically. By the time you're looking at this video, it may be uh, resolved. Uh, again, I have to pick a group and and or a provider. A provider needs to be picked because um, that's where it gets the uh, address from. The next step is to choose your discharge template. And this is actually where the core measures and diets and things like that uh, that you're, I'm sure you're familiar with, um, come into play. Um, resuming in here, you can see, you know, pretty standard uh, set of content here. You know, the functional status assessment, unfortunately, is a required element, you know, uh, by regulatory bodies, and that's why it's listed that way. Um, unfortunately, you'll have to do a quick assessment of the patient to answer these questions. Uh, there was quite a bit of debate about whether this should be required or not, and after we looked up the regulations, um, we all settled on doing it this way. Uh, I know it's going to be a real pain for me to do this. If you want to have any additional instructions, there's a spot there to put a free text box. Here is your standard warning for smoking and, and a helpline. 
and here is your problem list. Again, that should be kind of done already. You can reorder things however you want, up, down, left, right, and make it look the way you want. You know, this, this gives you a little bit more granularity over how the problem list looks. Here we're doing our core measures. Again, this is a required element. Um, and this is where, you know, CMS really will uh, ding you if it's not done properly. And this is your chance to really uh, meet the measure in a way that's easy. Incidentally, anytime you click an option anywhere, there's a little comment box at the bottom that you can clarify further. So in this case, we put no aspirin at discharge and patient doesn't tolerate, which is a perfectly reasonable way to do it. Or it might be easier just to use the radio buttons there and um, choose an option. Now it's asking you about your beta blocker, your ACE inhibitor, and your statin. And as soon as we pick what we want, you can see the at the bottom the comment button opens up again to further clarify whatever the response is. We're done. All right, you can take a look at this, either leave it in draft or sign it, and then save, pin, and move on. All right, we're uh, almost done here. The next step is to uh, take a look at the vaccines, make sure that your patient got the appropriate vaccine. That'll be brought in automatically, so really nothing to do there, just something to look at. And so if you don't see any vaccines there and your patient's greater than 65, you know, probably should talk to the nurse about making sure that happens. Uh, the next step here is to look at your forms and to add the excuse form it's a little bit of a quirk where you have to click on the edit button first and then once the form is there you click on it and it takes you into this little dialog that allows you to then pick a date and you're done Finally, the care notes are our instructions for patients. So if a patient wants uh, information about acute MI or acute coronary syndrome, you can choose that, and that'll print out with the final discharge packet. And perhaps the most important part of this process is to actually write the discharge order, without which you can't move forward in uh, printing the packet or actually discharging the patient. Uh, and that's your standard screen that you, I'm sure you're used to from existing functionality. There's no no change. So you would just save the order and the system knows that the order is now there and it'll give you the option now to finalize the list. After you review everything, um, you have to know that you're not going to be able to print the discharge packet until this uh, order is in and everything's been checked. So then when you're ready, you click the finalize button. And you can click save and refresh here. So then your buttons will become enabled. You can then print the packet or even not print the packet. Or you can save and exit if you're going to come back later and finish up the printing process at a different time. If you wanted to look and see what was already printed and what remains to be printed, you could click on the edit button on the medications uh, area and then go in and look at and see uh, what's been uh, printed and what's not been printed under the action column on the discharge medications. Here there's actually a location called black hole. <laughs> Uh, and that's because we are on a uh, test computer here. The, the printing process, you know, still requires, um, in some circumstances, on some units, it still requires that you pick a printer. There are certain units that that won't happen. You know, we're trying to figure out a way to, to remove that stipulation for the other units. And after that, you're basically done. Thank you for watching this video. We hope the discharge process is a little clearer and a little bit easier to uh, manage. 
Stay tuned for more St. Mary videos.